Hey, what is going on everyone? In today's video, I am going to be showing you a pretty solid bow build that is going to be one shot for a variety of enemies, and it's really good for bosses as well. Let's start off by talking about bows. There are two that you can acquire and equip with this build. Now, for most of it, it can be argued because this first one we are going to pick up is going to be the pulley bow. This, in my opinion, is one of the best bows, and you can pick this up over here at Mount Gilmer. If we go up to the top of this tower here, and do not worry, I will be showing you exactly where this location is at the end of this clip. Yet again, we are just going to take the next ladder up, and then once you are at the top here, there will be one single enemy that you will need to take out, and then from there, if you look to the left side, there's an item that you can pick up. This will not be a bow, instead it will be fire arrows that you can pick up and use later on if you'd like. You can then take the next ladder up, there will be two. You should see a corpse at the end here, you will want to pick up the item, and it's going to be the pulley bow. Once you have that, let's talk about the second bow that you can use. And the reason why I said it can be argued is because some would say that the black bow is probably the best. Now there is the rapid fire ashes of war that you have with this, so with that being said, let's head over to Avenue Balcony and then go down the stairs like so. You should see an enemy in front of you in the distance, take it right and then jump down below. Once you have dropped, you can then go towards the right, take a left and you will notice some more stairs that you can go up. I believe there is only one enemy right over here that will try to attack you. For the most part, you can dodge him like so, jump on top of the house here or the building and then go to each building like so. We are going to make the jump across the gap and you should see a body on the right side. There will be an item that you can pick up. Do not jump too far because yeah, there's no reason to go all the way over there. The item will be right here and it's a black bow. Once you have that, we can head over towards Death Touch Catacombs. What we will be picking up here is going to be an Uchi Katana. You can use any katana at your disposal if you have one. The reason why is because sometimes you may come across a situation where you do not have any arrows and you may need to use a sword. So we can head over here towards Death Touch Catacombs and pick up the Uchi Katana. We now have the Katana so we can then equip an Ashes of War to it. If we head over here towards this Lost Grace that you can see on the map, this is specifically going to be Outer Wall Battleground. We will then head towards the north from this exact Lost Grace. You should notice a camp in the distance that is set up. We are going to then go straight forward. What you will see inside this camp is going to be a silver scarab. Once you take out the scarab, you will be rewarded with an Ashes of War that is great if you combine this with a variety of different weapons. This will be Lightning Slash and I highly recommend picking this up. You of course can mix this up with a bleed build if you'd like, so definitely do not feel pressured into using just lightning strike. Continuing on, we are now going to talk about talismans. This will be lightning slash, and I highly recommend picking this up. You of course can mix this up with a bleed build if you'd like, so definitely do not feel pressured into using just lightning strike. Continuing on, we are now going to talk about talismans. If we head here towards the impassable Great Bridge, if you look behind the Lost Grace, you should see this huge tower. Go behind it, take the ladder, there's about two here, and you want to go all the way up. You will see a chest, and you will want to loot it. Note that there are two enemies here. Are they a huge pain? Probably not, maybe on New Game Plus, but for the most part, you can dodge them and go straight towards the chest and pick it up. We now have Arrow Sting's Talisman. Continuing towards the second talisman we are going to pick up, which is right over here at High Road Cave. We do want a torch because it can be quite dark in here. Entering in, you will see the Lost Grace on the left side. This is good. Claim that and then go towards the right. We are going to continue forward and I am going to speed this up just a bit. You can take a complete drop down, yet you might suffer or take some damage there. We are going to then slowly drop here because if you drop down directly down, you will most likely fall to your death, so just take it easy here, and we will continue towards the northeast. Once here, you will see some wolves down below. 
We can dodge them by jumping over. And then in the distance here, you will not see this wolf that's behind the bush. So go towards the left and dodge. There will be another one there waiting for you. So yeah, it could be kind of a jump scare there. Continuing towards the northeast, you will see the waterfall. And we want to drop directly down. Again, just drop down. You should see a broken structure. Hop on top of this pillar and then take a left. There's going to be another pillar that's been broken, but you can jump on top of it and then continue towards the northeast. Continuing towards the southeast now, you will see a giant monster in the distance. We will go towards the right and we are going to then take a left. You should see the waterfall continuing towards the waterfall. You can then take a left and you should see a mist door. Interacting with this mist door will lead you straight to the boss room. And once you have defeated this golem, you will be rewarded with a great talisman. This is going to be the blue dancer charm. Now continuing towards the third talisman. This can be found right over here towards Altus Plateau. Once you're here, you can then open up the map and locate Urtree Gazing Hill. Once you have that located and you've claimed the Lost Grace, you can go towards the right here and head towards the southeast. There's a bunch of broken down structures here, aka the ruins, and we're just going to jump towards the right side so we can land on top of the mountain here or hill, whichever word you want to use, and let's continue forward. You will see the broken structure in the distance. You can dodge the enemies. Honestly, they're not too big of a pain. Maybe if you get caught at some weird angle, but yeah, just jump over it and then you should see a way down towards the ruins and we are going to interact with the mist door. There's going to be a boss here that is quite easy to defeat if you have a good build. And even if you don't, it should be pretty easy to beat. Continuing on towards the southeast, once you've defeated the boss, you should see a door, open it up, and you now have the Ritual Sword Talisman. And last but not least, we are going to talk about the fourth talisman, which can be found right over here at Wyndham Catacombs. We are going to head towards the north. You should see a button on the right side. If you jump on top of that or walk past it, this will trigger a trap and it will take you out if you are low on health. We can then pull the lever. If you've already been through this catacombs, you might have to pull that, but for the most part, the lift will be already up and you can then take it down. We can now head towards the east. You will see two enemies in the distance here, as well as the blades that will fall down. You can run past all of this, but if you have to, take your time and time it so that you do not, you know, get hit with the, the blade and whatnot. So in this next room, there's quite a few enemies that can be dodged and you honestly can run past a lot of them. Although the one that's towards the ladder there, that might be a challenge, uh, but yeah, it can be done. This enemy will thrust forward and should give you enough time to grab onto the ladder and go all the way up. One thing to know is that these enemies have a great IQ because they'll follow you straight up the ladder. They don't care. And if you hit the button, you're definitely kind of damaged already. So when you interact with the other enemy there, it's just, it's going to be a huge struggle. So try to make it through this quick and use your stone sword key and then go in the room and pick up this right here, which is the lightning scorpion charm. What we can do now is head over towards the lost grace and we then want to add all the items that we just picked up. The pulley bow can be equipped at level 9. What I will be using instead of the Uchi Katana will be the Nagikiba. This is a different katana of course and we want to make sure that we have the Lightning Ashes of War equipped to it. Next we want to equip bone arrows or any arrows that we have. For armor it honestly can be anything although if you're Insisting on some sort of bleed build, then I would recommend the White Mask. For Talismans, Blue Dancer Charm, because this will raise the attack power, because we have a lower equipment load. We have Arrow Sting Talisman, this will raise our attack power with our arrows. And then Ritual Sword Talisman will raise the attack power when our HP is high. And Lightning Scorpion Charm, of course, will raise the lightning attack power. Of course, we will take more damage. We can use a Summoning if we like, and it's up to you. Make sure that you follow all of this and that you've equipped everything and you have the stats on the screen and you should be good to go. Now one of the requests that I've seen in the last few videos is that a lot of you have been asking for me to actually explain the build. And I understand that, right? There's got to be some sort of explanation on how to use it. Uh, yeah, for the most part I thought it was self-explanatory. For this, 
it may need some explaining. This build has a lot of options, okay? You can use lightning arrows because of course the scorpion charm will increase the damage there. If you are not a huge fan of lightning arrows, you of course can use bleeding ones and you can add the talisman which is going to be Lord of Blood's exaltation. You can totally swap out the Scorpion Charm for that instead. The normal attacks will do one hit against a variety of enemies. Sometimes if they're over there at Lindell Capital, it might be two shots. For the most part, it is one shot, and this is great for bosses. You do want to mix it up, of course, because if you run out of arrows, you may need to use the sword. What I would recommend is that you use one of the rune farms, so this way you can purchase a bunch of bows, or excuse me, a bunch of arrows, and you can equip that, and you essentially will not run out. One thing to note is that you absolutely can use the black bow if you like, if you're a big fan of the rapid fire ashes of war that goes on with it. This one is more where you hold it back as tight as you can, and then let it go, and it does a lot of damage. This is your option when it comes to the two bows. That's why I mentioned that it can be argued which one is the best. I think this one does the most damage overall compared to the black bow, so there you go. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video, and if you have any questions, leave them down below. And most importantly, man, I appreciate everyone that's currently subscribed. If you'd like to help support the channel, consider becoming a member. It does help out quite a lot. And if you, again, have any questions, leave them down below. Thank you to all the members and everyone that's currently subscribed, and I will see you all in the next video.